arise and tell every swarming locust over your life, over your finances, over your marriage, must catch fire. He must come to a place whereby we must be decisive enough that Jesus, we must walk with you in this journey. Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. I want to welcome all of you, those who are in Gosheni, those who are in Nairobi, those who are in America, those who are in UK, wherever you are watching from, from your house, from your sitting room, from your bedroom, from your bathroom, from driving, whatever, wherever you are, I am so glad that you have tuned in this day of uh, Wednesday as we this share about the Bible focus and uh, as we look deeper in the things to do with the faith. Every time I am sharing about faith, I am so much energized and encouraged, knowing that the Lord is with us and the Lord is going to do great things in our ministry. It is not in vain every time we hear the word of faith. That word of faith bringeth a change. It brings a transformation. There is a manifestation of the power of God because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of the Lord. Every time you keep on hearing these words, they encourage you, they give you power, they give you strength to move on. I tell you, we are going to make it in this time. Even in this corona, when life looks so dark, when you do not know what to do tomorrow, I tell you, the word of faith will be able to uplift you and give you the courage and the strength that you deserve and that you need. And I want us to pray as we begin this broadcast this afternoon. And I'm so encouraged that as I, whatever I'm going to speak today, is going to be a blessing to me and to you and to anyone who will open their inner ears to hear the word of faith. Because faith has the ability to make everything become possible. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for giving us an opportunity to hear your word again. Because the more we hear this word, the more it gives us life. The more we hear the words of the enemy, the more they bring death to us. And Lord, we are leaning and aligning ourselves to the word of truth, the word of faith. And as I share your word, I pray that you may use me as a vessel. And Lord, that I may minister not only to the others, even to me. I pray that, Lord, there is going to be a, such a prophetic word that is going to transform everything about us. And it's going to make us to overcome even during these dark ages, dark times. It's going, that word is going to give us the power and the strength to face any obstacle and any monster before us. I pray for every era today that, Lord, you are going to release a word that will give them the strength to face and overcome every obstacle. I thank you for your word is life. Your word is active. Your word is powerful. Your word is, it is what we need. Your word has the ability to make us to survive and to live even in conditions that do not allow. And I pray that, Lord, that word will come so alive to each one of us. And we are going to leave this broadcast today saying that the Lord has spoken to us and he has released a word of faith that will encourage us and give us the power to overcome every obstacle. We thank you and we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen and amen. You can shout your big amen wherever you are. Today I want us to share of things that I believe are very critical for a time that we are living in. 
I began by saying that the faith that God has given us has the ability to change our conditions, to change our world, to change our situations. There is nothing that is impossible before the presence of a man or a woman who is a carrier of faith. Because faith has the ability to change everything. And that is why we say according to Romans chapter 10 verse 17, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. That means the word of God is the carrier of faith. Every time we hear God speaking to us, it gives us the ability to face anything that is facing us. Whatever you are scared of is scared of you. So long as it knows that you have faith in God. That situation, that circumstance, that problem, that mountain in your mind, that mountain before you, that mountain that you look at it and you find things are not going the way they are supposed to go, that mountain can melt before faith. Because faith is God's spoken word. Everything we see on earth was made by the word. The word of God. God spoke everything to existence. And whatever you need has already been spoken. God has already spoken things from the beginning. said, let there be light. So if you are in darkness right now, I release the word of light. Let there be light. Let God enlighten you so that you can see the path where you are going. This corona, the situation, the lack of business, the lack of jobs, the lack of uh, interest in life, all those things can be dealt with the moment you receive the word of faith. And today I want us to share with us something that the Lord began to speak to me this week. And it was so, it was so real to me. And he began to talk to me that the greatest, all the fuse that ignites, all empowers, all strengthens the faith we have in God. It is called joy and peace. Two phenomenal things that you need in life to face any mountain. If you are going to walk in the realm of faith, you cannot afford to have peace and to have joy. Man is a spirit being. Man is a spirit. We are spirit beings. All of us, we are spirit beings who possess soul. Soul, and we live in a body. Soul realm, it has three components. In the soul realm, we have what we call emotions. We use emotions to feel. We use emotions to touch. We use emotions for many things. Then we have what we call the will. The will is the department that deals with the decisions. And I made a statement, I wrote a statement yesterday which says, decisions is open door to a reality. The decisions we make, they make us. So from the compartment of will in the department of your sorium, there is what we call the will, where you make decisions. And then the third component of soul is called mind. Mind is where you used to think. All these three things are connected together. How you feel, how you decide, and how you think, they are all connected together. And it is so important to understand that for us to walk in the realm of faith, the emotions we create, <clears throat> the emotions we create, whether negative or positive, they have impact to our faith. Many of us, we are failures in life because we allow negative emotions to take the first place in our lives. So that whatever we hear God saying to us, we cannot believe it because of our emotions, because of our feelings, because of our experience, because of the things that has happened before. And due to that mindset, that system that operates in your life, it becomes an obstruction to the word of faith. Jesus spoke and he said, because of your tradition, you make the word of God of no effect. Our traditions, traditions, they come from the systems in the soul realm. The systems you build in the soul realm, the way you feel, the way you decide, make decisions in life, the way you, you, you think, your thought life, determine so many lives. That is why the Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. 
and any time our lives are filled with so many dis discouragements, so many disappointments, so many things that are negative in our lives, we tend to go to the direction of negative. And every time you are going to the negative direction, you are going to death. Everything negative tends you to death. That is why sickness, when sickness comes in your body, they are leading you to die. But every time we have positive emotions, positive decisions, positive thoughts, we tend to life. That is why whenever Jesus spoke, he never spoke negative things. He said, I came that you may have life and have it in abundance. John chapter 10, verse 10. The thief cometh only to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus said, I came that you may have life and have it in abundance. If the church, if the body of Christ, if the people are listening to me, including myself, we can change the way we think. We can change our emotions. We can decide what to do in this life we are in then we are able to overcome some of the things that happen in our lives they happen because of our thinking because of our emotions because we are always sad have you ever seen people are sad 24 7 the angry wakiamuka subui wameamuka wamekasirika wakilete wachakula wamekasirika kila kitu wamekasirika wakienda kulala wamekasirika Life becomes so hard for those people. There are people already who are planning how they are going to die soon. Why? Because they have allowed their emotions, their thinking, their will to make wrong decisions. And that is why I came this morning to say there is an ingredient that is required for us to walk in the realm of faith and it's called joy. Being happy. Of course, there's difference between happy and joy because happy it is determined by happenings, it is determined by feelings, but joy is determined by knowledge. Joy comes from what you know. When you know that God is working everything good for you, then you can be full of joy in the midst of trouble. I came to challenge believers today. I came to challenge us today. That can we afford to be happy, to be joyful? The Bible says in the book of in the book of Philippians chapter four, verse four to eight. Philippians, I tell you, oh, I'm feeling good. I wish wherever you are, you can start smiling. If you have some smile with you, you can draw some smile from you and begin to be up. Let me tell you, the Bible says uh, that that laughter is medicine to the bones. Some of you would never, you know, it, I tell you, crazy people sometimes they live a better life than some people. Because they smile everywhere. They smile with the trees. They smile collecting papers around. They smile and they can, that is why you find there may be so many accidents. But to find a crazy person knocked by a theater is not easy. Even when they walk in the midst of the road. One time I remember we were driving with my wife and a crazy person, a mad person came to the road and he stood there. But we never knocked him. But a normal person can be knocked so easily. Listen to me, child of God. If there's anything you can do today, you can be happy. You can rejoice. When you go back home, if you're working and things are not working, my sub, I, 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 and my sub, you try to make calculation. Things are not working. When you go home, don't go with that gloomy face. Go home to your wife smiling and she will ask you, what happened? Did you get some increment of salary or did you stumble for you know, blessing? You tell him, oh no, no, I just have some knowledge. I know that God is working good things for me. I know the plan that God has for us, for this family. It is good plans to give us a future and expected end. I know I may have no money in my pocket now, but I have some knowledge that brings joy within my spirit. That in the midst of storms I can love, I can be loved, I no 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 afford to take a cup of coffee kapaya, ora kadaba I tell you the truth joy is powerful the joy of the Lord is my strength there is something that comes for a believer when you begin to practice to be joyful. The word of God becomes real to you. You begin to ignite the reality of what God has spoken over your life. Faith becomes life. 
every time I believe God for things and I want them to see them happening I begin to be full of joy I begin to be excited because the Bible says rejoice in the Lord always and again I say rejoice that is what I'm talking about Paul is talking to Philippians he's telling them rejoice in the Lord be full of joy be excited about God be excited about his promises be excited about what God has said about your life because joy releases is the fuse that ignites the faith in us it has the ability to make the things that were looking impossible to become possible so rejoice be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known unto God and the peace of God look at it and the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus finally brethren whatsoever things are true whatsoever things are honest whatsoever things are just whatsoever things are pure whatsoever things are lovely whatsoever things are of good report if there be a fatty and if there be any praise think on these things that is why I began by saying our mind has so much to do with our faith faith is in the spiritual realm it is in the spiritual realm it cannot be understood by the mind but the moment you align your mind with the faith of God then you are able to achieve the goals and the promises of God and that is why I say one of the greatest ingredients one of the greatest fuse what the fuse is what connects the power if you have a socket and you need it to work well it has to have fuse and that fuse must have a wire and once you remove the fuse then the power cannot flow that is why I'm saying for faith to flow in your life you need to have joy and peace two things you must tell your mind you must be at peace you must be peaceful you must say to what does peace mean peace means shalom shalom means a fullness it means completeness it means wholeness it means absence of war it means you are settled every time you hear somebody I'm at peace it does not mean it's the absence of war in the midst of storms you are peace you are comfortable like Jesus they are traveling the boat and he's inside and the water begins to enter in the boat and the boat is about to suck up to hiyo kuanguka kapa ya capsize thank you Lord hallelujah I have faith in God you know and while in still in that thing Jesus is asleep while these other guys are worried there are many people who capsize all the end in the sea of life not because they are supposed to end but because they lack peace one of the things that the enemy will do in your life not to believe in God is to remove your peace you go to sleep you can't sleep you have no peace you think that the landlord is coming to kick you out you think like that you are going to close business your children are going to I mean all kinds of worries and anxieties I came to declare to you peace is the absence of cares of anxiety of worries in life and that is why I came this afternoon to speak to you young people who want to get married and nobody looks around don't get worried be at peace in the midst of peace God supplies whatever you need that is why peace is anger it is our umpire it is our protection it is our voice if you want to hear God one way of hearing God is when God releases peace in your life and that is what Paul is saying he is telling the Philippians rejoice in the Lord and after rejoicing he tells them I like what he says he tells them let your moderation be known unto all men the Lord is at hand be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made known unto God and the peace of God which passes all understanding this peace I'm talking about it passes you cannot understand it you cannot explain it you cannot in fact you cannot explain what is wrong with this person look like David after the sun passed on when before the sun when the sun was sick 
The Bible says that David was not eating. He was fasting and praying and doing all kinds of things. But the moment that son passed on, he woke up, he washed himself, and he said, give me some food to eat. That is the peace I'm talking about. You have lost your wife. You have lost your husband. You have lost your children. You have lost your business. You have lost the church members are not coming. People are not giving tithe. People are not giving offering. And everything looks dark. But in the midst of that, you are at peace. You are saying it doesn't matter what people are doing. It doesn't matter. My life is not held by people. My life is held by God. God is my supplier. God is my peace. God is my joy. God is my everything. And you are able to lift up your hands and say, May the name of the Lord be glorified. That is what I'm talking about. And let me tell you, church, we are living in a very dark times. We are living in times that it is very easy not to afford to, to afford, thank you, to afford a smile. We are living in a time that it is very easy to sleep hungry, to sleep with so many questions, so many worries, so many anxieties. But I come to you as a servant of God who hears from the Lord to tell you it is time to change your countenance. Change it. Stop showing everybody that you are about to die. Stop showing everybody that Nikumedoka, Nikudokumu. No. Stop showing your children now. Pangen Mukule Makanda Mudokoi Havana. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Be at peace. God of peace. God of joy. God of your supply. He has not changed. We didn't live better. Because we are getting money every day. We lived better because God was our source, our supply. So what should we do? He says, rejoice in him. Not in things of the world. Not in what people say. Not in what conditions say. Don't allow your mind to mislead you to death. Don't allow your emotions to mislead you. To show you you are nothing, you are useless. You are not useless. You are a child of God. You are born again. You are washed by the blood of Jesus. You are bought with a high price. Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. That is why we have to be full of joy. If we are going to see the manifestation of the power of God in our lives, we must be full of joy and full of peace. And then he says that we should not be worried by anything but by prayer, supplication, and thanksgiving. Let our requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. So if you are going to overcome and see faith working in your life, you must be a man and a woman who is joyous. Stop every day complaining. Have you ever known there are people who are professors? They have a PhD of complaining. They complain of everything. They complain how they look. They complain about their eyes. They complain about their height. Their they complain about how fat they are, about how thin they are. They don't see anything good. They are full of murmuring and complaining. I come to tell you from today, stop complaining. Rejoice in the Lord. That is why the psalmist said that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. God knew us. We were not hidden before him. And that is why the joy of the Lord is our strength. Let us look at Nehemiah. Nehemiah chapter, Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10. Oh, I am being, being blessed. I must be happy. I must rejoice. The devil must know that we are not going to give him a room in our lives. We know whom we are believed. He is able he can deliver us even if he doesn't deliver us it doesn't make him not to be able to deliver us he is able to do all things look at what Nehemiah is telling them verse 10 Nehemiah chapter Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10 then he said unto them go your way eat and the fat and drink the sweet and send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared for this day is only unto our Lord. Neither be sorry, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. 
This is when they were reading the law and they were so much worried and they were so much feeling like they are nobody's feeling like that. And then Nehemiah comes and tells them, oh, it is no time to worry. It is no time to complain. It is no time to think about what will happen. It is time for you to go and eat the fat, drink the sweet, and send portions to them that have nothing prepared. For this day is only unto the Lord, our Lord. Neither he be sorry, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. I come this afternoon to tell you that the heaven is looking for the church to be full of joy. It's looking for you in the midst of trouble, in the midst of the things that are happening in your life. God is looking for you. He's looking for me. That can I be able to be full of joy? Can I be able to be full of peace? Can the peace of God stand? Even when the people whom I expected to help me, they have not helped me. Can I still trust in God? Can I still have faith in God? Can I still have peace in God? That even in the last hour, God is still able to show up. That peace is the anger. It is our strength. Don't allow the devil to steal your peace. Satan is doing all what he can in this life to steal your peace. To steal your joy. To steal everything about you. But I come to tell you in the name of Jesus. That it is the will of God for you. To protect your joy and your peace. Listen to what Jesus said in John. In John chapter. Let's read in John chapter 16 verse 33. John chapter 16 verse 33. Oh I bless the name of the Lord. I bless the name of the Lord. John chapter John chapter 16 verse 33 This is what he tells The disciples These things I have spoken unto you That in me might have peace In the world ye shall have tribulation But be of good cheer I have overcome the world These things uh, Verse 32 says this uh, let's read from verse that uh, now I wish you that thou knowest all things and needest not that any man should ask thee but this we believe that thou comest from forth from God Jesus answered them do you now believe beyond the hour cometh yeah is now come that he shall be scattered every man to his own and shall leave me alone and yet I am not alone because the father is with me then verse 3, that 3 says these things I have spoken unto you that in me ye might have peace in the world ye shall have tribulation but be of good cheer I have overcome the world Jesus is telling them I am the prince of peace I am speaking these things to you that in me in Jesus not in institutions not in people not in churches but Jesus is saying I want you to understand I want you to have peace in me this world is full of tribulation this world is unpredictable nobody in, in 2019, 2018 could pre predict that 2020 will be the way it is today there are a few people who said it will happen this way, this way but they were not sure of the magnitude of what is going on and happening even now and that is why Jesus said in this world you'll have to bless him but be of good cheer I have overcome the world how did I overcome the world I overcame the world because I am the prince of peace and if we are going to overcome the world system the mind, mind system the mind setup we must come to a place whereby we must have peace that Jesus giveth he said the peace that I give to you will give you the ability to overcome every trial and every, every trouble and every tribulation. In Psalms 34 verse 14, Psalms 34, it's very important to read the scriptures because the word of faith is hidden in the word of God. Faith is hidden in his word. That is why you have to mix the faith and the word. So let's go again to Psalms. Psalms 34. Oh, glory to God. For Psalms 34, verse 14. Psalms 34, verse 14. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace 
and pursue it. This is one of the greatest men of God is speaking. And he said, depart from evil and do good. Seek peace. Peace is something to pursue. This life, if there's anything you need to pursue in yourself, for yourself, for your future, is the peace of God. To be at peace. To be at peace. The reasons why apostles overcame, even when they were put in prison, even when they were tied, even when they were, they were beaten and left to die, the only thing that gave them the power to overcome that condition was the peace that they had. It's not easy to be put in prison like Paul and Cyrus. And you begin to sing when you are tied everywhere. When the blood is oozing, is you are bleeding, and you are able to praise the Lord until the prisoners could listen, there is nothing else that can do that except the peace that is from God. These men were full of peace. Anytime God will use any man, he will use a man who is in peace. Attack mutu anapayuka mutu ajui and when others are, are guessing what is going to happen, he's also guessing. When others are running, he's also running. He is not sure of himself. He is unstable like water. God will use men and women who are stable in him, who have stayed their mind in Christ. They have stayed their mind. They have settled their thinking. They have settled. Everything is settled. They have no an, an alternative. But they have an option. They have plan B. what I will do. Jesus. something. the alternative. There are people like that. And those are dangerous people. But men who have cut, men who have counseled everything and they have said we will live for God. Either God will help us or He will help us. We have no another alternative. We have to mefunja all other bridges. Somebody said a very powerful statement. He said commitment is destroying all the bridges behind you. You have nowhere to go back to. And that is what I'm calling the peace of God. Wherever you have told God, God, I am at peace in you. Pursue peace. Pursue to be at peace. Let your mind. Some people are having high blood pressure. It's because of lack of peace. Some people are diabetic. It's because of lack of peace. Some people are becoming crazy and losing it. It's because they lack peace. All the time they are full of worries. Full of anxiety. Full of things that have never happened. They are paying for interest of things they have not even bought. That is what we call worry. Listen to me, child of God. I came to tell you, if the word of faith is going to work in your life, you must exercise the peace and the joy of God. The joy comes from knowledge, from understanding what God is saying about you. Believe in it with all your heart. Believe in that God is not a lie. He's not a man that he would change. He is faithful. And that is what David is saying. Let us pursue peace. That peace will give you victory. Let's see Colossians chapter 3 verse 15. Colossians chapter 3 verse 15. Oh, we bless the Lord. I need that peace. I need to walk in that peace. Oh, hallelujah. My sons and daughters, you need that peace. In these times when business is going down, you need the peace of God. And let the peace, verse 15, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts. To the which also ye are called in one body. And be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. All these things cannot happen without joy. You cannot be full of joy, spiritual songs, when you have no joy. You cannot be singing psalms when you have no joy. You cannot be teaching and admonishing one another without the joy of the Lord. And that is why the Bible says, and let the peace of God rule in your hearts. Rule. In other words, take charge. The peace of God. Let it take charge. Let it take control. I come to speak to you, my son, my daughter. Let the word, let the peace of God. The peace of God. 
the peace of God to rule to rule in your hearts to rule in your mind to rule in your thinking that when other funny thoughts come around you shut them out you close them out and you say the peace of God is my portion and that is what Paul is saying he's saying let the peace of God rule in your hearts let it rule let's go to 2nd Corinthians chapter 13 2nd Corinthians chapter 13 oh as I come to conclude we bless the Lord I need that you need that peace in these last days we need that peace of God to rule in our hearts chapter 13 verse 11 oh we bless the Lord finally brethren farewell be perfect be perfect be of good comfort be of one mind live in peace Kayanda. oh hallelujah and the God of love and peace shall be with you and the God of love and peace shall be with you greet one another with an holy kiss my good God what a word finally brethren <laughs> farewell be perfect be of good comfort be of one mind live in peace be of one mind live in peace in other words have harmony in your thinking have harmony in whatever you do have peace in God because peace is also lack of uh, uh, chaos of the world lack of anxiety it is in the mind it is in the midst of trouble in the midst of trouble you are peace you have no cares you have no anxiety you have no worries why because all your cares you have given it to him all your worries you have given it to him all your troubles you have left it to him and that is why the peace of God it is so crucial in these last days for us to live a victorious life for us to experience the faith working in our lives many of us we have received so powerful words prophetic words but they fail to work because every time they want to work for us they find us dissolutioned they find us with worries they find us with anxiety they find us with no peace but every time you are at peace God shows up I'm telling you out of experience many times I, when I expected God to visit me in a special way it is the days I was at peace and I was in joy I was just having joy coming out of my heart joy hallelujah having joy in the Lord having hope in him having trust in him knowing that God will never let me down he knows what he's doing for me he has good plans for me he has good plans to give me a future and expected end let's read in John chapter 14 verse 27 John chapter 14 verse 27 John chapter 14 verse 27 we hear what the Lord is saying John chapter 14 verse 27 oh hallelujah I love the word of the Lord when I began to preach I used to use only one scripture and I tell you I would ningetwanga uh, njili kabisa but I discovered with the time as I grew that we need to be reading the word not just to quote it but to read it because the Bible says blessed is he that readeth so reading has a blessing itself so every time you see a preacher opening the Bible and reading it's not that it is not in his mind it is in his mind but he want to read it and that is why I challenge all of us let us learn it is important to read the word verse 27 John chapter 14 verse 27 it says peace I live with you my peace I give unto you not as the world giveth give I unto you let not your heart be troubled neither let it be afraid oh hallelujah can't you hear what God is saying hmm? he said peace I live with you my peace I give unto you not as the world giveth give I unto you let not your heart be troubled neither let it be afraid I don't need to be my heart to be afraid I don't need my heart to be to, to be troubled this is Jesus speaking this is not a man speaking it's not a bishop or an apostle this is Jesus himself he's telling the disciples I am giving you something that the world does not give the kind of peace I am releasing over your life it will be able to take you through in the midst of storms he says that peace is not the one that the world given the world learn peace when things are okay 
But we, even when things don't seem to be working, God has promised that we need to have peace. We do not rejoice because we have seen it. We even rejoice before we have seen it. And Jesus told Thomas, Blessed is he that believeth without seeing. That is why our peace that is in us, when we believe that we shall become billionaires, we, the wealth of the wicked, shall be transferred to the righteous. That peace does not happen when we have the things. It happens before we have the things. Because that peace, together with the joy and faith, they take us to our destination. If you want to sail well in this life, you must allow peace to settle in your life. Even when they tell you of cancer, many people die before their time because they concentrate on what they have been taught by people, not what God has taught them. And this is what Jesus is saying, even in this time of Corona, he is saying, let your hearts not be troubled. I am releasing something in your spirit, that thing I'm calling the peace, not just the world given. But I am giving you something that will become anger in your life, will become empire, will become your protection, will become your security, the peace. And this is your responsibility to tell your mind, shut up, be at peace. I never made it, so what? I'm not going to be worried of things that I have never done. Just because I didn't buy a car when I had money, it should not come back to me and begin to trouble me. That is a gone case. I need to concentrate on the peace of God and look forward for what God has for me. There are things that God has put in store for you. It is not about age. You can be 70 years old and get things that people of 20 years are getting. Why? Because the moment you know, the knowledge will release everything you need in your life. That is why Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So he says, the peace I give to you is not as the world giveth. And Jesus is so busy making sure that we have that peace. Many times I have looked at it, life has become so sometimes tough, things you cannot explain, things you cannot understand. You do all what you know how to do. And instead of producing what is right and what you expected, they produce other things. What do you do in such a scenario? Let me tell you what you need to do. It's to rejoice. It is to allow the peace of God to work for you. Because God was not asleep when they were happening. If you have not been paid your money, you don't need all the time to be gloomy and quarreling and asking the Lord, why have you forsaken? No, rejoice. God was aware. So he needs you to be at peace. Because for us to live is Christ. Everything that we do, we must know that God is watching us. And that is why he's looking for us to be at peace with him. Let's read our last scripture in Romans chapter 14, verse 17. Romans chapter 14. Oh, hallelujah, I bless the name of the Lord. Romans chapter 14, verse 17. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Romans, Romans, we bless you, Lord, we bless you, Lord. Chapter 14, verse 17. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. For he that is in these things suffered Christ is accept, acceptable to God and approved of men. In verse 16 it says, Let not then your good be evil spoken of. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. My son, my daughter, my friend, pastor, bishop, apostle, prophet, teacher, evangelist, minister of the gospel, God sent me this afternoon to tell you the days to rejoice are not coming. They are here with us. The days to our peace in God are not on the way coming. They are here with us. 
Those dates should not take, make you crazy that you cannot greet people, that you cannot go to say hi to them. I came to tell you. Jesus said, let your hearts not be troubled. Let your hearts not be afraid. There are so many things that can make us have to be afraid. There are so many circumstances that can begin to make us to doubt what God said, whether it's true. But I come to repeat to you again, as the Lord has spoken to me, it is for us to control our feelings, to control our emotions, to control our will, what we decide, to control our thoughts, what we think. Never entertain negative thoughts in your mind. Never. Challenge yourself from today and tell yourself, I will not allow negative thoughts because negative thoughts will produce negative decisions which will produce negative emotions. The way we react, the way we show forth our feelings, many times it's because of what we have allowed to think in our minds. It's our thoughts. It's what we think. That is what Jesus is saying. I am giving you peace. Take it. I want you to be at peace. Know that I am working for you. Know that I am doing everything on your behalf. Just what you need to do is to listen to what I say to you and do it with peace. Any instruction I give you, the Lord says, do it without questions. A peace, my peace. If God tells you go for business, don't say, oh Lord, you know nobody's buying. No, just do it with peace. Every time there's no peace in your life, then you are headed for destruction. If there's anything I would say today, if our faith is going to work and change the world, because the world is changeable, if our conditions are going to change, one thing that is required of us, is to our peace, just to our peace, to relax. There's something I always tell my wife, relax. Just be at peace. Hallelujah. Relax. Things are not working, relax. Oh, glory to God. We are not here, this world, we are not here for rehearsal. We are not doing rehearsal. Our life, life is not a rehearsal. Why should you not sleep thinking of things that have not yet happened? You see, if we are to think, if we are to be concerned with what is going on and what is happening, it should not deprive us, our peace, our joy. It should not make us to live like purpose, to live like people who are already in ICU. We are supposed to live. If we know God, God is our God, is our supply, is our source, why don't we relax? You know, those who have children, the children do not understand what is happening. Whatever they need, if they need pizza, they will tell you, Daddy, I'm talking about small children. They will tell you, Daddy, I need pizza today. Daddy, I need a new cloth. Because they know you are capable. How much more when we know that our God is in charge, is in control. He is able to touch somebody whom we don't know at all to supply our needs. That is why he's telling us, let us not be like the world. The peace is giving us is beyond the world. That is why we have to concentrate on his word. What he says we believe it. And we must silence every voice of the enemy that tells us commit suicide. That tells us there is no hope for you. That tells us you are going to die. That tells us you never pay your house rent. You never have your own house. You never have your own car. You never have your own wife. You never have your own husband. Life is too hard. You cannot marry. You cannot be married. You nobody can propose to you. All those voices must be silent. You should never encourage them in your mind. Because when they come to your mind, they remove the peace that God gives us. But I come to you today and tell you the fuse, the fuse that ignites the faith in us is the peace of God 
and the joy of God. And I wish you the joy of God. I wish you the peace of God. From today, let the peace of God, God, rule your hearts. Rule. Let it take charge. How you think, let it take charge over you. Let it guard you. Let it become the umpire of your heart, of your mind. And when you do that, you will enjoy life. I have decided to enjoy life. In the midst of Corona, I have decided I'll be full of joy. I'll be full of peace. I'm not going to allow anything or anybody to deprive my peace. If things go wrong, let them go wrong. But I, they are not going to affect me. Let them happen outside. But inside I must guard it. The Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence. For out of it, it flows issues of life. If you are there and you are not born again, this life we are in, you need Christ. You need to surrender your life to Jesus. He's the way, the truth, and the life. He's the only one who can give you the right peace. He is the Prince of Peace. He can give you peace in the midst of storms. Peace is not the absence of war, but in the midst of war, you are still settled in the Lord. Your heart and your mind is settled in Christ. And it's only Christ who can give you life everlasting. He came that you may have peace and have it in abundance. He came that you may have life and have it in abundance. He's the Prince of Peace. And today, you can surrender your life to Jesus. If you are not born again, say this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, come in my life. Be the Prince of Peace in my life. Give me joy. Forgive me my sins and write my name in the book of life. From today, I accept you to be my Savior. Forgive me and cleanse me. Thank you. For giving me an opportunity to hear your word. I am born again. Amen. If you have given your life to Jesus, please you can contact us. Or you can contact a church, a Bible-believing church near you. And talk to the pastor. And tell him that you are born again. Whatever need you have, the greatest miracle for you to receive that need met is to allow the peace of God in your life. And the joy of the Lord. Change your thinking pattern and begin to align your thinking with the word of God. Change that system that you are building you. That tells you your wife is bad, your children are bad, your husband is bad, your employer is bad, your neighbors are bad. All things are working against you. Change that mindset. Change it. Begin to think positive. Begin to align your emotion to the right direction. Be full of joy. If you have your child, rejoice with your child. Eat what you have with joy. Hallelujah. If you are eating mudokoi, eat it with joy. If you are eating kedere, eat it with joy. If you are eating matoke, eat it with joy. Glory to God. Just be full of joy. Can you make up your mind and tell yourself, whether I have money in my pocket or not, I'll be full of joy. I'll be excited. I'll be rejoicing. And when people ask me why, I will tell them because I have knowledge. Because he said, joy comes by what you know. Happiness comes by the happening. And I tell you, the two of them, happiness and joy, they work together. Because the moment you ignite that joy, then outside you begin to see things working for your good. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Where there's joy, there's laughter. Love sometimes, even when you don't feel like love. Love even when you're alone. Sometimes try it in your room alone. Just start loving. <laughs> Just love. Just be happy. What is so... I mean, this life, don't take it too serious that you cannot be happy for yourself. May the Lord bless you. Those who are sick in your body, be healed. Those who have issues in their marriages, let them be sorted out. Whatever need you have, those who have not paid their rent, I pray that God may intervene and you pay your rent in the name of Jesus. Those who are building their houses, now you may come, I pray, may God release finances that you may finish what you began. Whatever you are believing God for you to happen for you, let it happen. Those who are doing their business and business has been slow, I pray may God release and cause people to come and buy what you're selling. I release the grace of God over your life. May you live and not die. May your emotions be positive and not negative. May you be excited of what the Lord has done because his mercies 
and new every morning. God bless you. Let his peace keep you and govern you. This is Bishop David Malombe, all the way from Gosheni, Bible Celebration Church, where God lives.